Sussex. Well, here we are. This is very quiet, isn't it? How are we going to start this one off? I think what we need, we need a bit of a, we need to do something different this time. I think we need lots of different voices and lots of different languages counting down from 10 to start this, what's going to be an amazing broadcast. Detlev, count us down from 10 in German, please. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. Here we go. Fantastic. Nina, count us down in from 10 in, in your dialect, please, from India. In Hindi, our national language, does no art sat che pa char teen do ek shunya. Here we go. And, and Rowan, although you're in India, you're going to count us down from 10 because you've got far better English than me. Off you go, sir. 10, 9, 8, <laughs> 7, 6, 5, 4. Three, two, one. Excellent. Hello, everyone. Welcome to myself, Max McGillivray. I'm editor in chief of Beanstalk Global. We are launching today a fantastic broadcast series with an amazing business. Nina called. Hello, everyone. What's your business called, please, Nina? Oh, this is Fresh Express from India. And so what Nina and I and Rome, we, what, we, what we want to do is we want to promote Indian fresh produce for the for the amazing uh, 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 taste, the taste, the vibrance, the colour, the, 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 the history and, and what they're looking to do by changing the world with Indian fresh produce. And so we're going to be starting a broadcast series with them ongoing to promote Indian fresh produce on a global basis. And we're going to be bringing in some special people along the way so that we can find out their involvement with Indian fresh produce. And today we've got an amazing guest. Detlev, can you introduce yourself to the world, please? Hello, everybody. Good afternoon from uh, Germany. My name is Detlev and I'm uh, working for and uh, joining uh, Fairtrade Germany as part of the global fair trade grassroots movement and organization. And where the involvement with Detlev is, is that Detlev has been very lucky that he's visited Fresh Express. He's met with Nina and Rowan and all of their uh, colleagues. And so we're gonna do a deep dive with, uh, with Detlev a little bit later on fair trade, especially as it's fair trade Germany's 30th anniversary in 2022. But we also want to hear from Detlev what he saw in India and why he thinks it's an inspiring country that we should look to support in the respect of buying their, their fresh produce. But Nina, just let's go back to you, you and I, because it's all about you and I. How did our relationship start? How did the relationship with Fresh Express and Beanstalk Global start? Can you remember, please? Yes, of course. We have Global Woman Fresh uh, to thank for that. Uh, basically, Global Woman Fresh works towards uh, bridging the gender diversity in fresh produce, an amazing international organization of women in fresh produce. So we have them to thank Max to bring us together. Excellent. And just um, let, let's hop over to Rowan. Rowan, can you just give us a bit of a description as to Fresh Express? And I'm, I, you know, I'm completely biased towards your business, but just just give us an understanding as to who Fresh Express is. How how big are you? What do you grow? What do you export into the global markets, please, Rowan? Sure. So um, I will be covering a little bit of this in my presentation, but uh, just to give you a little bit of a background. Uh, so Fresh Express is a grower exporter of fresh produce from India. And we've been uh, consistently supplying into Europe for uh, Europe and a lot of uh, the markets so worldwide for almost 28 plus years. And uh, we have our own family owned farms and we work with a group of about 500 plus farmers. And uh, we proudly call ourselves farmers and uh, because we control a lot of the value chain straight from the early growing stages all the way up to where uh, when the, the fruit is actually delivered to a customer. And uh, that's something that we're very proud of. Excellent, Rowan, well done. So to this broadcast today, our, our mini agenda is that um, we, we're going to have a, a, a deep dive interview with Detlev um, to get an understanding, as we said, about fair trade and their involvement with, uh, with Fresh Express. Rowan's going to go through a really interesting PowerPoint uh, presentation as to where Fresh Express is and um, how they were created and where they're looking to be in the future and why they're keen to collaborate with the uh, partners on an international basis. And then we're going to have a bit of a, a, um, a Q&A to see where that, uh, that takes us. And then we're going to end up with a, with a positive note. But everyone, it feels that this platform 
platform is great, but what we do want to get away from is them uh, in the UK, we call it the, the Zoom squares of death. We want to find out more about Fresh Express and Indian fre fresh produce. We, it's almost like we need to, I don't know, we need to see something different. Nina, what would you recommend? How can we find out more about Fresh Express rather than looking at our, our four handsome faces, please? What would you recommend? Why don't I recommend a video? A and, video? Uh, absolutely showing you so a walk around a farm how about that excellent um detlef can you put a euro in the pot and we'll play the video would that be okay detlef yeah sure one euro fifty euro. okay boom excellent. okay everyone let, let's see how we get on with the video if you could all turn off your screens and uh we will get going with this video about fresh express here we go Namaskar. Fresh Express is a family-owned grower exporter of grapes from our own farms in India and along with our group of 500 plus small holding farmers has been collaborating consistently since the last 27 years. Our agricultural background and focus on sustainable regenerative farming and social initiatives with rural women has ensured certifications like Fair Trade, BRC, Global Gap and Grass are implemented in spirit and action on an ongoing basis and not just pictures to be framed. The second COVID wave, especially in India, spread to the smallest of their villages affecting our farmers. It's been amazing to see the woman force working with us take up the onus of running the family and boosting the morale of their respective families, not only economically, but physically and mentally. So as to relieve some of the pressure during the pandemic, collaboration with Global Women Fresh and Global Rights for Women USA, we conducted workshops on how to cope with domestic violence. They have generously contributed to sponsoring family photo medical insurances for our women farmers, helping to get timely medical assistance. Stiff medical bills and scare of strict medical protocols was the biggest obstacle to families seeking timely help. I personally define my role as ensuring every person associated with us in the entire value chain is healthy and happy and equipped with the required skills, be it sharing healthy tips and recipes to build immunity to more technical global gap quality systems so that he or she can perform to his or her optimum potential. I strongly believe healthy people grow and make healthy groups. Since inception, Fresh Express has always viewed itself as a technology company pursuing natural and regenerative farming. We pride ourselves in blending cutting-edge technology practices with traditional Indian Ayurvedic and natural farming practices. We promote the use of biological pesticides and organic soil manures of plant origin using an interesting in-house technology called biological food which basically boosts the innate immunity of plants. This, of course, results in better tasting grapes and a great shelf life. Building resistance to pests through healthy microclimate and social environment, forestation drives, and intercropping with mutually beneficial plants all results in cost of agriculture being reduced by up to 30 to 40%, and chemical usage down by 33%. In-house, we're developing cloud and blockchain technology for traceability from every bunch that has been harvested and the conditions and inputs with which it has been grown. Every plant in every plot of our 500 plus farmers are geotagged and drone monitored so that the end customer can actually know from which farmer's plot was his or her bunch harvested and if interested by whom in the farm. The harvesters have wristbands which help them record and display live from which farm they're harvesting and similarly the packers can be tracked live in the packhouse too. We use artificial intelligence-based remote sensing for on-farm monitoring using satellite and drone data that has the capacity to monitor and record individual plant health in every farm so that only optimal inputs of water and fertilizers are required. What the pandemic has taught me personally is that it has underlined how fragile human beings as a species are. They're interdependent and interconnected. Something someone does on the other side of the world can have a positive and negative effect on you. 
I've become better at adapting to latest technology trends. Digitally, I can be anywhere in the world and at the same time with the click of a button, like right now. Online is definitely the new normal, bringing with it the importance of being available to my customers 24 7. It made me acutely aware of the delicate relationship between health, farm to fork food systems, and the environment. So, thus, despite all odds, pursue on our part of sustainable and regenerative farming. Personally, I really miss traveling and meeting family, friends, or suppliers and customers, besides the smells, the sounds, and tastes, as nothing replaces a warm smile and a hug. Thank you very much. Everyone, if you can come back in, that'd be, uh, that, that'd be great. Um, I just got to, I got to uh, slightly lead the witness with, um, with, with Detlev. Um, oh, Detlev, can you, can you come back in or if I, if I canned your, your video properly? Detlev, can we hear you? Ah, here we go. I can, I, I can hear you, but I cannot activate my camera. Okay, I, I tell, tell you what you do, Detlev. If you, if, oh, you're back in. I, okay. I do do apologize, Detlev. That must make you very proud to have a business like um, like Fresh Express um, involved with, uh, with 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 fair trade. And and it, I'm, I'm sort of slightly frustrated because we've got COP26 just coming to the end of in the, in Glasgow in the UK, and food wasn't on the agenda of COP26. Detlev, can you imagine if that video had been run at um, at COP26 and people could see and the, the, the difference that uh, the, the lights of Fresh Express can make on, on a global basis. Delev, what do you think? I think that is one of our biggest challenges uh, that um, we, on the one side, talk, are talking about global justice, uh, uh, enabling farmers and workers to have more control over their lives, decide how to invest in the future. On the one side, on the other side, uh, I. I, I, I see the biggest challenge on climate and, uh, and, uh, and environmental issues and how to bridge these two biggest issues on science sustainability topics together. And uh, I think that one of the biggest uh, challenges here is that we also as fair trade not only have need to have a look on um, on ethical and social issues, but we need to bring it together also with climate and uh, environmental yeah. issues. The challenge for, for companies, but also for consumers to buy sustainable products is that social and global justice very often is far away from a consumer in UK or in, in Germany. Yeah. But here, I think we need to learn that we in the future have to bridge also climate and, and uh, environmental issues. I mean, uh, talking about fair trade farmers and workers and what it means for them and talking about prices, prices that aim to cover the average cost of producing their crop sustainably. What does it mean as a vital, let's say safety net, especially when market prices drop? That is one of our biggest issues in the fair trade system. And for instance, with not fair trade premium as an extra sum of money paid on top of selling price to invest in business community or process of choice. But yeah. we even need to do more in the future. The great quality of India grapes, which consumers in Europe, in UK and Germany can buy in the season of the year where we not have the opportunity or where it's not as possible to buy grapes from Italy or from Spain, which means in February, in January, in March, which I and we most welcome. But on the other side, we also need to take into account that we increasingly also will have question mark about the climate challenges we have and getting these products transported to Europe. So that is a little bit beyond my main agenda and my main speech here today. But as you mentioned the COP, and I believe that was yeah. only Barack, Barack Obama who mentioned, please also think about what are you eating every day, bad food, good food, and so on, that we hear 
And that is what I now also did spontaneously, especially after your question on climate and the COP, as a COP, yep. uh, that we more also as a way how to deal fair in the future, that we all need to think also on the climate uh, effects every grow of products have in the future. Citizens of the world, you've just had a masterclass from Fair, from fair Trade, from Detlev. Detlev, th thank you very much for that. And if you're not already following Detlev and his colleagues um, and, and Fair Trade, please do, because it, it is great to hear that summary, but we also need to, to join, to hold hands with, with, with Fair Trade to create this change. And let, let's segue this to, to Fresh, Fresh Express and the change that they're making, especially within India. Um, uh, Nina, let's start with you, with yourself. You, you, your motto, changing Indian agri agriculture landscape with woman power. Just, just linking this all up. Could you elaborate on this? Is, is this, is this jingoistic? Is, is this just a marketing ploy or is it genuine? How can you generally affect your, your business, your fresh produce, India, uh, by this, this statement, changing Indian agri landscape with woman power, please? Absolutely. Thank you uh, for that question, Max. Actually, it is thanks to these, it's really not jingoistic because it is thanks to women that Fresh Express was born. When Fresh Express farms were, were, were cultivated in the most drought prone region in this drought prone area in our region, and there were no men households. So they were just because no one thought anything could be grown here. So it was women run households who were there who came forward to help us start these vineyards. So it's actually thanks to women who were there. And because of this quality of the land, we had to start with natural farming. There was no other way. So that is how uh, the woman, the local woman and the natural farming, fresh express farms were actually born. And thanks to that is that because thanks to the women and natural farming, we have the quality of the grapes that we do as Fresh Express, which is our USP. Excellent. Well, well done. And, and you know, you know, I wasn't uh, looking to be overtly jingoistic. I, I just wanted people to understand, to, to, to hear the passion of, of, um, of yourselves. Uh, Rowan, the, the, the video, the great video that, that we've just seen, uh, we're looking at how you grow on a natural farming basis. You've got women empowerment, you've got cutting edge technology coming through. How, how does this all work together? How does this culminate uh, with Fresh Express and, and contributors value to, to your customers? How, how does it work? Give us that magic dust, Rowan. So uh, firstly, with regard to um, being growers ourselves, I think uh, for as long as I can remember, uh, retailers have, it's, it's been their, one of the primary objectives. It's been a priority for them to be able to source as directly as possible from the farmer. And uh, that is what we've tried to kind of bring uh, for, the, uh, for, for a lot of the retail chains that we're working with. Uh, because uh, the, the complete value chain can be quite, quite convoluted. And that yep. is where we have a lot of overlap when it comes to fair trade, is that we want to be able to connect the farmer directly to uh, the market that he's selling in. And that kind of ensures best returns for the farmer. And it's a win-win situation for the supermarkets or the retail chains as well. And uh, the technology has been where uh, technology is being like an enabler in terms of connecting all our farmers together on one platform and to be able to help them kind of grow as per the international export standards. So uh, that's, that's, uh, that's how it kind of all comes together. And it, uh, it, 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 it's a well-rounded grape uh, that we eventually delivering to our customers. Excellent. De Delev, I love having people like Rowan on uh, because no offense to you, me or Nina, Ro Rowan is the future isn't he? And to have, um, and we're seeing this uh, in so many different countries now, we've got the younger generation coming through. Sorry, everyone, if you haven't worked out, uh, Rowan is, uh, is Nina's son. And we, we, we're seeing this, uh, the, the next generation coming through, and they've learned everything that uh, the, 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 the parents and the other family members ha have done. And now they're taking the best of that, and they're making it better through, through technology and through the enthusiasm that they can 
can bring. So, so Rowan, we're really looking forward to seeing how you progress as you as you take on the baton of, uh, of Fresh Express um, um, ongoing. So, so Rowan, um, Nina, with this unique story that, that you've created, and you're really good on, on your on your authentic marketing, as I as I'd call it. Uh, why do you think this is going to be um, advantageous to to customers, to retailers globally? Why should they engage with you with the story that's um, that you've created? Nina, you go first, please. Yeah, I think, uh, Max, you know, what the customer at the end of the day wants to be really sure where he or she is putting her money and whether if she's paying more, like something like for a fair trade product, whether it's actually going back to the farmer. So actually, I have an interesting, uh, this is actually, this is our gluten-free flowers, I mean, which we do, wow. which we market domestically, but a similar label where you have a QR code where you can meet the farmer. I, 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 I hope it's visible. So you have the opportunities like this with the grape where you can uh, actually know the entire journey of your grape bunch. So who has it been grown with, by? And a little bit about the family, uh, women farmers, or and also whether it is certifications, what temperatures, or anything like, you know, that they want to know about the farmer. And also another thing that they can get to do is if they have an option to contribute in that person's journey. So if they want to, you know, they, they can, it's, it's not always about money. If you want to spend some time mentoring, it could be for learning English, life skills, or if you want, because their dreams are like, it's, it takes so little to just fulfill their dreams. Yeah. So this is a way you can really connect uh, with the customer. In fact, we have something called the Grape with the Heart campaign because it's not just a grape that you're buying. It's something that you're buying more, you know, because it's the amount of passion and work that has gone into getting that bunch of grapes to you. Fantastic. all the way across the seven seas. Nina, fantastic. And, and Rowan, I find it fascinating about QR codes because QR codes uh, about four or five years ago, they um, they, they, they weren't working. And on a marketing, marketing perspective, um, people had uh, had been turned off by them. And now they're, come, they're coming back in. And to be able to have it on, uh, say, say your grapes um, eventually when they come over so that we can scan it when it comes into our retail and, and have a look at the growers and have a look at your, your website, that's going to uh, definitely a, a assist us to get, get a, a better better understanding. So, so Nina Rowan, it's, it's great to, to have you you on with your expertise. Debt level, it would be really interesting to now hear, hear you because you were in this privileged position of, I think it was early 2020 to go out to, to, to Fresh Express. And, and, I, and I just need to uh, show off the, the grapes of, uh, of Nina and Rowan. Look at, look at these. Look, at, you, you, you can't make up. Oh, going the wrong way. How beautiful they are. Uh, so, so Detlef, just talk us through your trip. How did it come about? And, um, and had you been to, uh, to India previously? Um. Thank you very much, uh, Max. Maybe uh, let me maybe, maybe uh, give me the chance also in a few sentences to explain uh, why it was so important to uh, also uh, meet uh, Nina and, and her team and, and to visit the uh, grape farms. Um, Fairtrade Germany is one of uh, 22 country organizations worldwide uh, where products with a fair trade label are available to consumers on retail shelves and restaurants, but also in school and canteens. Um, the label or product with the label means that producers and business have met internationally agreed standards, which have been independently uh, certified. Our work, especially on the, in the country organization, uh, which we also will increase in the global south significant over the next five years, is uh, and have two major fields of work. On the one hand, we convince business partners such as manufacturers, but also retailers that securing the supply chain, complying with certain SDGs and meeting the needs of consumers can often be achieved more quickly with fair trade certified product. The other area is that we as a grassroots movement have a civil society mandate and through our work and campaigns such like fair trade schools, towns, and university, we make a significant contribution to placing a stronger focus on fair trade and global justice. So what I and my team in our 
commercial department are doing is that we not only are selling a service, a license, a license with a fair trade label, but we also sell products, categories, and here we also need to understand much better how does the farmers work, what are the main topics, what are the hotspots, how are grapes uh, being farmed. Otherwise, I cannot sell or promote products like grape, cocoa, coffee, and other products. So what, that was one of the main reasons when I met uh, Nina uh, somewhere in Asia and she invited me to visit uh, the grape farms where I immediately said, uh, yes, thank you. And I had the great honor in 2019 of accompanying Nina and visit uh, her visits to uh, grape farmers and learning a lot about uh, growing vine grapes, which was so important for me. I was very impressed by visit to the pack house, the quality controls, the visit to the farms. And I was, of course, also what um, Ron just explained, very impressed by the youth, use of drones, <laughs> at least. So for growth control in the fields, what was for me really surprised that te technical assistance or support combined with agriculture will be or is a new future also in order to meet the demands in regard to quality controls from the commercial customers like retailers or also wholesalers. And at least the cert fair trade certification and the stories behind this, for instance, women empowerment, is also gender is a very important issue on also the SDGs, is exactly what customers are asking and requiring. So of course, um, the grapes must meet high quality standards, uh, which is part of, of retailers and consumer standards as a minimum, and the sensoric must uh, exactly fit to consumers' expectations. But on top of this, it is very important that grapes, farmers also can tell a story, and here especially the empowerment of women farmer, um, uh, which mainly are uh, improved and, and uh, managed by Nina, is very, very important also as a maybe competitive advantage uh, for Fresh Express uh, worldwide, getting the business extended uh, to many retailers as possible. So. Well, well, well done. And had you visited um, India previously? I have not been in, uh, in uh, India previously. I've had, I had planned to be in uh, India several times. I have also the honor to be a board member of the uh, Asian produced, fair trade producer organization. But over the last two years, uh, we had only virtual meetings. So I'm maybe planning to go to India in December for a next board meeting, okay. but so far not. Okay, and, and just to use you for our eyes and ears, because we're going to forward this broadcast on to a number of um, key retailer contacts in the UK and the EU. You've been to a number of fresh food businesses globally, and, and you can tell very, very quickly as to the culture within those businesses. I'm, I'm slightly putting you on the spot here, Detler, but could you see that Fresh Express is a well-run business and a business that has a very positive future? I think, um, as I said, I think the need for, for, for especially grapes uh, in the first quarter of the year uh, is there and there is a demand. And I think especially Fresh Express with the experience on quality, on professional processes and the way they promote uh, grapes worldwide and especially how they can meet the demand of both quality demands from the retailer side, but especially also these sustainability approaches on top uh, should be on, is in my view, uh, very important and uh, very also, uh, I see that Fresh Express definitely meets the demands for, for retailers, yes. Thank, thank you. And, and now it's an opportune moment. It's a, it's a, it's a great timing uh, for, for Rowan to just run through his 
his um, his presentation on on Fresh Express. Ron, if that was uh, okay to, to hand it over to you, and we'll just let you run with that. And and Detlev, Nina, if you could turn off your videos and your and your sound so that we can give Ron the stage, that that would work very well. So Ron, over to you. Let's hear your masterclass, please. Sure. Um, I will just share my screen. Oops, um, that's excellent. I'll, I'll just fill for you and we can see your screen. So it's all good to go, yeah. Ron. Are you, are you able to see the screen, Max? Yep. Okay, perfect. Good. You're away. Well done. All right. So, all right. So, uh, hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us. Uh, we'll, through this presentation, we'll be talking a little bit about how Fresh Express and Fair Trade have been driving sustainability with uh, together with the Indian farmers. Uh, this is a little bit about uh, what we do, who we are. And in India, just to give you a little bit of background, in India, typically we have very small land holding farmers, which is very different compared to a lot of the other major uh, producing regions around the world. And what this creates, the, the challenge that this creates is that uh, the grower and the exporter are very often two different entities which makes it a challenge uh, for a single entity to kind of control the entire value chain. And that is where Fresh Express comes in. That is where we've kind of thought about it a little bit differently. Uh, so uh, we are growers and exporters. So it's the same entity that's handling the entire value chain. Uh, we have our own family owned farms and we are supplied with uh, 500 plus partner farmers that the same group of farmers that we've been working with for the past uh, 28 plus years. And the way we've positioned ourselves in the market is that we cater to a slightly more premium end right. of the retail chain where uh, we customize, since we're growers ourselves, we're able to customize the fruit for each of the markets that we're catering right. to. Right. And that, that really helps uh, when, let's say, when you're looking at a market like Canada versus a market like China, for example, two very different markets, two very different requirements. And uh, that, that becomes essential. Uh, and that, that, that is what customers appreciate. Uh, in a very simple pictor pictorial manner, like I've shown what, how exactly it is that we are kind of delivering straight to the retail chains. And uh, as I mentioned, the Indian uh, supply or the Indian value chain can be quite convoluted simply because there's so many, um, so many uh, members in the complete value chain uh, from the farmer to the, to the end customer. And that's where we've kind of done away with all the middlemen and just kind of directly supplied the, the final customer. Uh, the, the open market, when you look at a lot of the FNV open market fruits and vegetable markets, it can be quite brutal for a small farmer, uh, especially when the prices can be extremely low. They can be often uh, oversupply conditions. Uh, retailers uh, tend to run a lot of... Uh, a lot of discounts or uh, like a lot of campaigns. And that can be quite uns unsustainable as a small farmer where he's not able to, let's say, sustain uh, his basic costs and uh, kind of on a year to year basis. And fair trade really kind of uh, contributes positively here. They've stepped in where they're ensuring that good fruit is paid for with sustainable and fair prices. And uh, it's ensuring that the farmer himself can develop and the community around the farmer is developing. So that's, that's something that's very different compared to a lot of the other, uh, uh, let's say, campaigns or certifications out there where it's not just the farmer, but also the community around the farmer that is benefiting from this. Uh, we'll dive a little bit into some of the de uh, details of the fair trade projects that we're currently in. Uh, this, this is about the... This is about the Grape with the Heart uh, campaign that uh, we've run with uh, on a trial basis currently with uh, and successfully with some retailers uh, within Europe, uh, European Union and also UK, uh, where we are basically the objective is to engage with the customer at a personal level, and especially in an age where retailers are looking to drive uh, their customers back into the stores. Uh, we're looking at in-store displays. We're looking at right. engaging uh, content over there where they're able to actually see, like once they pick up a punnet, they're able to see exactly who that punnet has come from and actually see a little bit of a movie about that exact, of, the, of that, that farmer 
uh, the woman farmer who has supplied that exact panet and her dreams, her life and everything about it, which which has been a phenomenal success. And like we, we really see in terms of, uh, uh, like, I mean, in terms of appreciation from our customers and even the end customer, uh, the uh, like they, they've really enjoyed uh, seeing this in the stores. Uh, why is it that we're passionate about women empowerment is, uh, I think uh, Nina's covered this a little bit, uh, but uh, where we started off, I'll just I'll just mention it briefly again. The where we started off was an absolute drought prone uh, land, and that's completely been transformed into lush farmlands today, uh, where uh, like a lot of the women kind of had to take the lead and uh, practice natural. Like we we train them in natural farming, water conservation, best practices, and uh, a lot of the technology, and uh, they were able to really kind of uh, uh, take the charge and really bring about a revolution in that uh, in a lot of these uh, small small regions that we're currently working in and uh, it's all about uh, putting or let's say uh, giving women uh, the uh, the lead or the charge and kind of putting them in leadership positions uh, so that they can actually kind of take decisions for themselves and be financially independent and we're proud to uh, actually say that uh, we are over 95% of our workforce today is women. Uh, and that's, uh, that's something that we're really proud of. This is a little bit about uh, during the season, of course, everything's very busy and like the women are very involved in the farming and so on. But during the off season, uh, it can be quite a challenge for them uh, in terms of employment and so on. So this is an initiative that we started where the Saki in, uh, in the local language means a friend. So this is like a self-help group uh, where the women come together, we provide them with certain workshops uh, such as jewelry making, weaving, pottery, and a lot of uh, life skills uh, and whatever they're interested in. And uh, they also taught about entrepreneurship, they taught about financial literacy, and uh, they're using this today to become financially independent and actually kind of sell their own, uh, their, the products that they make themselves with their hands. And uh, we're also looking at some retailers actually, like especially with the cloth bag trend catching on uh, even across Europe. Uh, we, we're looking at uh, hand-stitched bags by these women being sold as produced bags uh, for, for the customers in the, in the, in the stores. Uh, these are some of these uh, partners that we've been working with together uh, in building a better tomorrow for women. Uh, this is the Shahid Blair Foundation for Women from, from the UK, uh, Alps, which is uh, an Austrian government initiative. Uh, the natural farming, uh, which is a big part of the philosophy at uh, Fresh Express and how we've brought about the complete revolution in terms of uh, uh, converting drought lands into farmlands. Uh, this is primarily being driven by uh, the women groups in uh, different, different villages where they are synthesizing, where they are making their own uh, uh, inputs, biological inputs, say be it the pesticides and fertilizers. Uh, they're, they're made with the technology that we've taught them and uh, they have, it's been fine tuned so that they can be as effective as the chemical alternatives. And this has done wonders for them because it, it tends to be a lot more cost effective, especially in today's world where all the costs just seem to be rising. It can be a heavy burden on the farmers. Uh, so we're looking at how, how farming can be made cost effective and this has done wonders for that. And uh, we actually, we, it, it's, uh, it's amazing to say that over 92% of our inputs today uh, that the total inputs, the chemicals, the whatever, the sorry, the pesticides, fertilizer, everything included, over 92% uh, of the inputs that go into farms today are organic. Uh, whereas there is still the 8% grapes can be of a challenging uh, crop when it comes to going 100% organic. So uh, we still have that 8% to go, but that's slowly, slowly uh, decreasing. So we're seeing 92% uh, and gradually we hope to make that 100% as well. Uh, this is a little bit about how we're nurturing tomorrow's leaders, and we strongly believe uh, education plays a big role there, and uh, especially in the rural regions, even today uh, in some parts of India, uh, education, uh, formal education is not seen as highly crucial uh, in rural regions, especially for, for girls. So we've 
created a lot of, we supporting a lot of uh, students, we supporting a lot of schools in the rural regions with scholarships, with technology, with all the kind of uh, necessary infrastructure. And uh, there's a lot of awareness that uh, needs to be created, uh, especially for girls' education. Uh, and we, we're doing a lot of awareness campaigns around that. Uh, there's also, it's about high time we feel that uh, technology plays a much bigger role uh, in the agriculture industry in India. And that's where young talent uh, needs to step in and actually be a part of this industry. Uh, as uh, uh, apart from natural farming, I think uh, technology, I think would be uh, the next biggest uh, uh, like a part of our philosophy or uh, uh, foundation pillar for us. And uh, which is technology has been a major enabler for us in terms of doing whatever we've been able to do so far in terms of connecting the 500 farmers that we do today in being able to actually control everything that's happening on these 500 different farms. And uh, each and every farm of ours is connected to a cloud uh, where we're gathering millions of uh, data from data points from all these different farms, uh, be it through satellite imaging, drone imaging, through apps, through IoT devices, through sensors, weather stations, and so on. And we able to sitting in one location, a lot of our agronomists uh, are able to actually provide meaningful insights for the farmer so that he's able to take timely interventions. Uh, and this, is, this has been the primary, uh, this has been a major enabler in terms of ensuring that the quality of the fruit is as per the most premium standards that are required in the international markets. Uh, this is a little bit about the on-farm technology moving into uh, uh, some of the technology that we're doing post-harvest. Uh, this is especially with regard to harvesting. So harvesting, if I want to be able to track uh, exactly, if you pick up a punnet, I would be able to tell you which exact plant that particular punnet was harvested from. And this is, this is done using our precision harvesting technology that we've built in-house. Uh, we've probably built in-house. The other is smart packing stations where each and every station in our pack house is, uh, is a smart station where it's constantly being, it's Wi-Fi enabled, it's constantly transmitting data to a central location and uh, it provides us a lot of insight into who's doing what and like how the fruit is being packed. Uh, weather station, again, in today's world where climatic conditions can be a real challenge for a farmer, weather stations have been a boon for a lot of them and uh, they help them actually uh, even predict pest attacks using artificial intelligence uh, algorithms that we built. The other is actually under development, but it's, uh, it's absolutely a million dollar question uh, in the fruit uh, industry where every grower, every exporter is worried about whether the fruit is going to last, whether it has a shelf life. And we're using technology that actually comes from the pharmaceutical or even the automotive industry. And we've adapted that for uh, the agriculture industry to try and predict and to do a rapid uh, chemical analysis of the fruit to be able to actually detect whether what the shelf life of that fruit can be. Uh, so that, that's a little bit of an overview of everything that uh, we're doing, uh, how fair trade has been helping us, what we uh, hope to achieve or what we are currently doing. And this is only the beginning. Uh, with there, there's a lot more uh, in terms of uh, what we want to be able to achieve. There's a lot more projects in the pipeline. So we, we're looking forward to an exciting future. Rowan, can I just say, we had a WhatsApp message uh, in just, just now saying, uh, can you tell Rowan that's one of the best presentations I've seen on Zoom, uh, the way that he eloquently and intelligently presents Fresh Express as a credit to Fresh Express and Indian Fresh Produce. Um, I will look to engage with him direct. And that's a, a Fresh Produce consultant uh, in the UK. So just to say con congratulations on, on the way that, uh, that, that, that you presented that. Um, thank you, thank uh, you very much. No problem, you deserve that. Devlet, can you, can you come back in as well? And whilst Devlet's just coming in, I know that uh, Nina's very, Nina, you come in as, in as well, please. I know that Nina's very kindly answered um, Antoinette's uh, questions, but it's um, that she very kindly put in the chat. Uh, but Rowan, be interested to just get your steer on this one, that the, the level of um, um, IT infrastructure that you're looking to bring in to, to assist Fresh Express, I, I always use the statement that there's so much uh, profitability held up within the supply chain 
um, whether that be from the plant to, to the retailer or anywhere in between. Um, with the technology that you're you're putting in, is it been adopted by your female farmers? Uh, do, do the farmers undertake training, workshops, and discussions? Um, and how does that work with the with with the, the, the basis that you're you're looking to be very woman empowered with Fresh Express? Do, is that technology being ad adopted by all the ladies in them in your grow network, please? Right. So, um, firstly, in terms of a lot of the technology that we develop, uh, the the first or the primary objective when we developing any technology is how like we always look at the target audience as any woman farmer and we have uh, uh, we, we keep in mind that uh, objective when designing on or uh, kind of developing any new technology uh, so it is kind of made as simple as possible in terms of the interface that they have with the technology in terms of their access to the technology it's made very simple so that they are able to access it there's of course baby steps uh, in terms of uh, especially uh, maybe uh, the older generations uh, they, they they are a little bit hesitant but uh, what we've done uh, is that we've taken on a lot of young uh, women from uh, yeah. colleges from universities and we've trained them in these technologies and they kind of go out into the fields and kind of help a lot of these women farmers. So then that's how the, it's, it's been baby steps so far, but uh, we're hoping that once the, even the younger generation gets further and further involved in the agriculture industry, I think the adoption uh, of such technology should be, should happen quite rapidly in the, in the upcoming years. Well said. Um, I, I'm fairly well traveled through Africa and I remember going through Tanzania um, and it's, uh, it's it's not one of the richest countries in, in the world. Let's put it that way. And I remember going down on my motorbike on this uh, fa fairly uh, beaten rough rough track. And I could see to my right hand side um, there was a, a, a mature lady with a, with a baby wrapped in a swan on her back um, uh, hoeing maize. And I thought, well, you can't get more, much more rural in, um, and isolated in Africa. Um, and then she pu pulled out a phone out of, out of a pocket and she had an iPhone. And uh, she was, so was this, uh, this lady, I'm guessing in her 60s or 70s, having, having this, this, uh, this conversation on iPhone. I thought, well, if technology is here, it's got to be everywhere. And when we got further, further down the road and we were visiting a, a banana plantation, um, the, the, the housing wasn't the best uh, for, the, for the workers, but it was clean and it was comfortable. But what amazed me was that um, all of the workers workers were, were paid digitally. They weren't paid in, um, in cash. They were all paid um, via um, online banking. And the likes of Tanzania, I think there's eight or nine uh, different online systems. So, so I think the adoption of technology, especially in, in agriculture, is, is, is very, very, very fast moving. Um, Detlev, I just wanted to move over to you. We've had that masterclass from Rowan as to um, how he's looking with, with the rest of the colleagues within Fresh Express to, to create this difference uh, within, within the business. And, and we're going to come on to Grape with a Heart a, a little bit later. I think that's just um, inspired. Um, Detlev, collaboration. You must want more um, uh, businesses, um, more partners like Fresh Express to join Fair Trade. What, what does Fair Trade want in the future in the, in the way of your, your partners? What, what does success look like for you, Debt Lev, as you're coming to your 30th year um, anniversary next, next year? How can we all help yourself and Fair Trade, please, Debt Lev? I mean, Fair Trade believes the best way to eliminate, eliminate uh, poverty is to pay farmer a fair price for the produce and workers a fair wage for the labor. And that is what drives uh, fair trade. And uh, how are we measuring success on the market? That is primarily that we are looking on what are the volume which have been sold under fair trade certified terms with a fair trade label on the market. And that is what drives us really in our daily discussions um, with uh, our commercial uh, partners. And uh, for us, it is again, again, to also convince uh, commercial partners to say yes to fair trade certified products, to say yes, that fair trade is able to prove the concept on what is doing the difference in getting grapes certified with fair trade. What is the impact of being fair trade certified, both on the farmer level, but at least also for the additional uh, uh, sale of, of volume? And looking forward to, to, to our next year, I mean, we have over the last 29 year been very successful in convincing customers, commercial customers, but also consumers to offer fair trade products to the 
consumers. Um, now we will celebrating the 30 years anniversary with a big thank you campaign to especially our commercial partners, uh, to consumers, to cyber society, because that is the engagement of exporters, that is the engagement of retailers, that is the engagement of manufacturers who makes it possible that farmers are part of a fair trade also in the future. So our wish and, our, um, uh, and, and, and your question, what is our wish uh, next year? We want still to extend the business and the volume for fair trade. Uh, for fair trade grades, or for many other fair trade products. And I think a good move here is not on the, the next generation who wants more, more sustainable products, but we are very soon talking also about the EU law on uh, supply chains, which means at least human rights due diligence. I know that in UK, for many years, this Modern Slavery Act law already was uh, presented. We have since summer this year, also in Germany, uh, uh, got a human rights due diligence uh, law. The same in France. We will very soon see this supply chain law uh, for the whole Europe. And here again also is a chance for exporters, but especially for the farmers that with fair trade, they achieve the request or the demands for human rights due diligences with fair trade standards much sooner than with other standards. And of course, it is the, uh, the duty of companies to fulfill human rights in the supply chains. But I think with fair trade, with a great collaboration with companies, with exporters like Fresh Express, I think we also can secure retailers' risk management in the supply chain a little bit better uh, with fair trade and with companies and the farmers like Fresh Express. That is what I maybe would give as a kind of additional approach. We talked about global justice, we talk about uh, climate change, how to bridge global justice, social compliance with climate, climate issues. But at least another big driver is simply what we have been required for many years, that we get a supply chain law, not only in isolated countries like UK, France and UK, but in the future for whole Europe, which also makes the decision to source sustainable not only as a wish, but more as a duty for companies, for retailers to fulfill human rights due diligence. So here I see the future development of fresh fruit, uh, sorry, of uh, fresh express and the grapes, very positive in the future. Detlef, th thank you. I, I could listen to you all day. What you're talking, what you're presenting, is, is just a, a masterclass of how the fresh food, the fresh produce sectors should be developing in partnership with, with, your, with yourself on an ongoing basis to create that success that we all need, especially in our turbulent times. Nina, has it been advantageous to yourself, to Rowan, to your colleagues, to Fresh Express, to be aligned to fair trade? Oh, definitely, Max, I would say, I think especially now more than any other time, with rising costs like worldwide, uh, having fair trade as a partner and uh, marketing fair trade produce is, I think, it's it's definitely puts us at an edge, uh, at a higher level. But I also think that uh, you know credit and kudos to fair trade for having a very um, systematic, uh, you know, proce uh, procedure for audits. And also because so people, it gives the customer satisfaction. It gives the customer the confidence that, you know, wherever she's putting her extra uh, money, it's going into the right hands. And whatever Rohan presented, these are projects that we have been doing with the fair trade premium, you know, for communities and uh, for farmers. So it is definitely an advantage to be associated 
the threat threat. Thank Nina, you. thank you. Rowan, your views. Is this an advantage or a disadvantage in your eyes to be aligned to fair trade? Right. So um, especially in uh, today's world and especially with everything that's been happening since the past uh, couple of years, uh, it's, it's a pity because uh, what we've seen all over the world is uh, a lot of the basic, uh, basic commodities, uh, the prices are increasing drastically. Yep. Uh, the shipping freight levels are at almost are, are, are at a very unsustainable level and they're almost at a point where they will be curbing uh, exports. Uh, and uh, what, what all this is going to do is that in the entire value chain, uh, all the middlemen uh, are going to basically take their cut. But eventually the, the person or uh, the part of the value chain that's going to be most affected is going to be the end farmer. And that's the, he's going to be take the biggest hit. And that is also what we worried about uh, in the upcoming season uh, where uh, we Indian produce is quite, uh, is, at a, is at a little bit of a risk, uh, especially with the ocean freight levels uh, at the stage at where they are. And um, what fair trade does for all of this is, is ensures that uh, retail chains or, uh, uh, you know, the, the customers actually understand what, what's happening in the value chain and ensures that whatever the case may be, like there is a stronger collaboration between the, the retailer and the farmer and ensures that whatever the situation is, there is always a fair price, a sustainable price that is being paid back to the farmer. And uh, being under, like uh, following the principles of fair trade or being under uh, uh, a certification like fair trade just ensures that, uh, that it's not just the farmer, but also the community that uh, commu the uh, rural agri community that is kind of benefiting from all this. And as I said, like I think it's uh, in today's age, I think it's more important than ever to for retailers to align themselves along these principles. Uh, otherwise, it's it's going to be very difficult, especially in in the developing countries, uh, for farmers to be able to kind of sustain themselves at this rate. Rowan, well, well done. Well done. And everyone, we're just slightly um, run, running out of time. What I've learned today is why we should be partnered with um, Detlev and Fair Trade and his colleagues on an international basis for the reasons that, that Rowan has just so eloquently um, summarised, that they can uh, uh, flatten out the, the supply chain issues, the pricing issues, the margin issues that we're all in encountering. So as we know, you don't need me to tell this, tell you this, but I'll just tell it. Fair Trade is a, is a force for good on, an, on a global, on, uh, on an international basis. And you look at uh, Fresh Express, I'm keeping looking down at my notes, Nina, about grape with a heart. Just, just fit finish us in the respect of great with the hearts and how that's making a difference and and how that's going to um empower the, the consumer to buy more grapes please yes uh, that, uh, just as rohan had shown in his presentation is great with the heart it basically talks about women who we work with during the season and it also has it, these are grapes which you know when you buy the punnet you actually know this their stories what they have gone through. So it has little dreams that they have shared with us that we would like to share with the customer. And also, uh, you know, because grape is seasonal, it's a four to five months uh, seasonal crop. So at the rest of the year, the little projects that she has done, and this is what, you know, Grape at the Heart is all about. So you contribute to those projects, life skill projects, which equip her to live her dreams. And that's why it's called Great with the Heart. That's fantastic. We're, we're going to follow that and uh, we'll, we'll, we'll share it on all, all of our social media platforms to, to give you as much leverage from our side as well. So everyone, just, just to wrap up, Rowan, how can we find out about Fresh Express? How can we get retailers, whether they've been America, UK, Europe, um, Australasia, uh, Asia, to, to engage with you? How can we find out about Fresh Express, please? Uh, well, I think uh, we, we have, I, I am myself actually for most part of the year based out of Europe. And I do travel very often. So, I mean, you just have to ring me or just <laughs> drop me an email and uh, I'll be at your door the next day. So wow. you, you, don't, you don't have to worry about getting in touch with us. Excellent. And we'll tag uh, Fresh Express on all, all of the links. And Fair Trade, Detlev, how can we 
how can we find out more about fair trade over and above your your, your great um, talk today? How can we find out about fair trade? How can we engage with yourself and your colleagues, please? We have uh, overall information, uh, and you can see these on the website, uh, Fairtrade International, Fairtrade in UK, Fairtrade Foundation, uh, Fairtrade in Germany, Fairtrade in France, wherever we do have our homepage with all the contact dates, both on the commercial and cyber society side. But at least Fairtrade does again have their own booth on the famous big fruit logistica in the beginning of next year, so everybody who wants to combine his or her visit with these, uh, hopefully also next year, physical meeting on this fair, everybody is welcome also to visit our booth. And we can, and we do usually have our colleagues from the producer networks from Asia, from Latin America, from Africa, sitting also at our booth. They are <laughs> really good equipped to talk and to uh, answer on any question you might have. And at least also we from the market side will definitely be on the fair. So welcome to the fair trade booth in the beginning of next year. Excellent, that's a date. Yeah, with, with, go, go Nina, yeah, go. We forgot India. And uh, you have the producers from India, you have <gasps> me. Yes, of course, of course, <laughs> Nina. <laughs> excellent fair trade chocolates yeah. there, go yes, there we go so so come on everyone that's we're, we're all going to meet Dell Levin as, uh, as fantastic colleagues in uh, in berlin in early february and just to wrap up this one let's see how, how this goes uh rome what's your favorite fresh produce please uh dragon fruit apart oh. from it dragon yes. fruit apart from grapes okay that's a, that's a, 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 a interest Interesting angle. Nina, what's your favorite fresh produce, please? Traitor. It's definitely <laughs> Indian grapes. And that's the large, you know, the large local indigenous variety, which is called Manik Chaman. It's delicious. Trust Excellent. Me. Wow. Detlef, what's your favorite fresh produce? <laughs> <laughs> and we Just definitely have grapes in our home today. Hey! Traditionally to grapes. I love strawberries. So grape oh. and strawberry are my favorite fresh fruit. Excellent. We've learned so much today. This has been a, been a masterclass from India and from Germany. You know what I'm going to say, engage with Fairtrade International and with Detlev. And you know what I'm going to say, engage with Fresh Express and Nina and Rowan. Everyone, you've been brilliant. Thank you very much. Keep safe. And we'll all see everyone in Berlin in early February. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank, Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye.